So hi everyone, it's uh, 2 p.m. and uh, I'd like to welcome everyone here. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I do want to just have a quick poll um, and it's a pretty simple one. All I'm asking is if you can actually hear me clearly. Uh, if you can just fill that out quickly, we can, we can get going. Okay, excellent. Seems like everyone can hear me. Um, <clears throat> so as I said, I'd like to welcome you this afternoon to this seminar or webinar. It's not a seminar. Um, and uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank Deborah Davis, the uh, Regional MBAC Director of the Greater Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, African American Chamber of Commerce for setting up this webinar. Um, we met a few weeks back and we talked about, you know, setting this up and uh, that it would be really helpful for people um, that have businesses to be able to set up Google My Business correctly for their business. Um, if at any time during this webinar you have any questions, uh, please use the Q&A um, tab on the left to write your questions. Um, I will attempt to answer the uh, questions at the end of the webinar. We should have some time um, for us to do that. And then both the questions and answers and the recorded webinar um, will be available to all of you uh, later this evening or uh, tomorrow morning at the, the latest, hopefully. Um, and I will also send everyone uh, this information via email, uh, the email that you use to register with. All right. Okay. So um, it's good to see that we have regist registrants from all over the state. Um, but with that being said, uh, maybe there was not enough time to get it out to everyone. Um, we really would like you to share this webinar with uh, friends and family that could potentially benefit from knowing how to use Google My Business. Um, and you are more than welcome to share it on social media, etc. Okay. So what is Google My Business or GMB as it's uh, commonly shortened to, and I'll be using GMB for, for the rest just to make it a little easier. Uh, first and foremost, it's totally free. Okay, it doesn't cost anything to use and you can set it up for yourself for free. Um, you may have people that say, hey, it costs money to set it up. No, that's not true. Uh, you can do it yourself. Some companies may offer that and you may want to use their services and pay for it, but you do not have to. Uh, with that being said, you'll see within the app, there's an option to use Google Ads. Um, and that's obviously pay, but you don't need to have Google Ads. It's only if you really decide you want to use Google Ads. Um, and Google My Business is relatively easy to set up and manage. Um, it, uh, most of the stuff is explained pretty well within the system when you set it up. And obviously we're gonna go through it today to help you get going. So GMB is a tool that allows you to manage your online presence across Google Maps and Google Search, okay? It allows you to manage your business information that is seen on Google and it gives you a way to interact with your customers. It also provides you with analytical information that can help you understand how people interact with your Google listing and how you can improve your business. Um, just remember that GMB only serves businesses that make in-person contact with customers. It uh, doesn't serve online only businesses. So if your business actually interacts with people, it doesn't necessarily have to interact through a uh, set building, for instance, a brick and mortar building. You could be going out and servicing and meeting with, with clients and you could still use it. But if you're just taking orders online and uh, posting them or whatever, that, that's not all, that's not considered one of those uh, uh, GMB business services. Okay. Um, so we're going to look at the uh, majority of people have mobile phones nowadays, and they use them every day to find goods and services. Um, and 
Uh, I mean, everyone has them on at all times. So Google has perfected how it shows business information on these mobile devi devices. Okay, excuse me. Uh, um, there's a little space on a mobile screen, as you know, um, but Google has definitely uh, perfected how it displays that information. It has done such a good job that actually virtually all decisions to purchase or visit a location is made directly from that one page, that one page that you use to say, find uh, restaurants near me, for instance, okay. What this means is that very few people actually cl click through to websites anymore. Um, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have a website for your business because you may have additional information that people would like to look at, for instance. But what it does mean is that you have to make sure that your GMB listing is current and complete, okay? So as you can see, when a, a potential customer clicks on a business listing, everything they need to communicate and find you is there right in their hands, okay? They can use Google Maps to navigate to your business straight from the app, okay, straight from that page that they just opened. They can call your business. Um, they can see the hours of operation and when it is busiest. Okay. Um, depending on your business type, you'll see different options within that, within that page. Um, for instance, food establishments have the option to display a menu and have the options for delivery service, that type of thing, which other businesses wouldn't have, for instance, like I don't have a, a menu per se on my, uh, my uh, listing. Um, just by looking at the screen, you'll see that Google puts a lot of em emphasis on photographs, okay? Google is looking for digital media, photographs, video, 360 uh, photographs um, on a business listing. Um, Google wants you up to be updating your information, posts and photographs often. I went to a uh, Google Street View conference in London last year and the thing that I came away from with them was that Google wants photography. They want visual media, okay? And they want it to be new, okay? So you have to update that information. And so that is the type of thing they're looking for. And that's what they're going to uh, use to decide, you know, like sort of like what businesses they're going to display on your local search. Um, and what has been found is that Businesses that add photos to their business profiles uh, receive about 42% more requests for directions on Google Maps. So they're coming to visit you and 35% uh, more clicks through to their websites than businesses that don't. So, you know, they're still, you're still going to get click throughs to your website. Um, so it is, it's pretty important that you put photographs up of your business. Um, Another part of uh, GMB that Google places a lot of emphasis in, on is reviews, okay? Um, if you think about it, when you're looking for the next visit to visit, business to visit, one of the first things you will do is look at reviews, okay? Um, and most probably you'll look at the negative reviews. That's just the nature of being human. You know, we, we want to see the bad stuff first. Um, and the thing that Google is looking for is that you interact with your clients through reviews. Okay. And it doesn't matter if they're positive or negative, you need to interact with all those, uh, reviews. Um, it doesn't matter. You know, you, it wants to see that you're answering all those reviews. Okay. Uh, remember that asking your friends to give you a five star review will work against you. Um, Everyone knows there's something fishy about a business that has only five-star reviews. Has only five-star reviews and the people that are doing the review have only done one review. Okay, so don't be one of those businesses. People, you know, they see through that. So what is uh, Google trying to achieve here through GMB? Okay, what it, what it is attempting to do is to foster trust, okay? Businesses that are registered and verified on GMB are trusted twice as much by customers than businesses that have not done that. 
people who care. Um, you know, you can write all sorts of good stuff on your on your website about how great you are and all the services that you do, but customers want to see photographs and they want to see reviews. That's what they trust. Okay, so you you are trying to get their trust. If if customers trust what they see on GMB, they will come and visit you. So. For instance, if you were to have two businesses, exact same type of product, um, everything is the same in terms of what you offer, but the one has photographs and reviews and the other one doesn't have any photographs. Um, which one are you going to trust? Which one are you more likely to go and visit? And that would be the one with the photographs and reviews. So very important that you remember this when you're setting up GMB. Um, so an interesting thing about re, uh, reviews, which um, you should definitely take advantage of is that uh, it gives you a direct link to share requests for reviews, um, which you can then, um, you know, you can put that link on your cash receipts. Um, you should display them on uh, your counter so that uh, people can make, go and make a review, you know, cre create a review on your business, um, share them on your invoices, emails, and socially. You can see, you can share it on Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, and via email. Um, and if you are, if you ask for a review from someone, uh, be it verbally, and you should do it verbally as well. You know, say like, you know, please, would you review my uh, business? Okay. Um, people are more likely to do a review. People don't think about it, but if you actually ask, it's like everything in life. If you ask for something, you're more likely to get it. Um, so the same applies to reviews. Ask for them and you're more likely to get them. But the thing to remember is that don't just ask the people that are happy with your service. You should be asking everyone across the board. Okay. It doesn't matter who it is. And the reason being is these reviews act as a window into your business's performance. Um, and you want to take advantage of that. You're, you've been provided with so much information from, um, reviews and you definitely need to use it, whether it's positive or negative. So uh, continuing with um, reviews, and I want to spend a little bit of time on this because I think it's really important. In fact, uh, there was another big thing that uh, Google was saying is really important at the conference is reviews and whether you actually answer them. Okay. Um, you got to think that how do I deal with negative reviews? Okay. Customers that complain and leave negative, negative reviews, are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to people that may not be happy with your business. Um, most people just don't complain. You know, they, they, do, they do not complain and will simply not visit your business again and uh, they'll take their dollar and spend it elsewhere. Okay. Um, what you got to remember is that it actually costs a lot less to turn around and keep an upset customer than it does to attract new ones through advertising. Um, after all, they know where you work. <laughs> okay, they know where your business is. They've been there already. Um, it costs a lot less to convert um, a negative customer, uh, well, a, a customer that's not happy with your service, convert them into a happy customer that will stay with you. Okay. And generally negative reviews, people are just calling out and asking to be acknowledged. Okay. Uh, while you may not be able to fix the problem specifically, um, just the simple act of reaching out can change an upset customer into a strong influencer for your business. So for instance, uh, you, you're a restaurant and last Thursday, it, things just blew up. Okay. And you didn't have enough servers and the service, you know, was not good. And this client or customer was there and he's obviously not happy with the service. Um, you can't do anything about what's happened in the past. Okay. But, um, 
what what you are doing by answering a review is that you are showing potential future customers that you care and you'll do what is right um, to fix the problem. Okay. Uh, always try to take that problem offline. Okay. Offer a phone number or an email that the customer can use so that you can get in contact with them. Um, then make sure that you that you do communicate with them. Okay, uh, don't give them a phone number and then don't answer the phone, or don't give them an email address and then just never reply to them when they send you an email. You want to uh, reply to that email as soon as you get it, um, and. It is important to remember that it's not wrong to offer gift cards or free meals, etc. Um, a lot of people think, a lot of people are afraid that customers will abuse this. Okay, but this has been shown to be not the case um, as a whole. Just make sure you keep track of of any free meals that you give, that type of thing. Um, Sorry, I'm just thinking. Yeah. Uh, if a contact, if a customer contacts you via another means, uh, for instance, by phone, uh, by email, or heavens above, they send you a letter in the post, um, you need to reply to that medium in that medium. Okay. So if they send you a letter, answer them with a letter. Don't you know? Don't try and do it in some other way unless the customer actually asks you. They send you a letter and they say, please phone me at this phone number. I'd like to have this problem resolved. Um, so it's, it's important to remember that, um, that you always uh, follow that medium if it's not actually the online reviews. Um, so the important thing to remember about negative reviews are that they are absolute gold for your business. Okay. They improve your information. To, uh, they provide you with information uh, to make improvements that will ultimately make your business more profitable. Um, it is important, however, when answering your reviews that you maintain your emotional intelligence. Um, and what I mean by that is say, for instance, a review upset, upsets you personally okay don't answer immediately okay um give it a little time before you answer okay you don't want your emotions to be involved uh you don't you don't want to be hot-headed when you answer uh, and when you do acknowledge the problem okay apologize and offer a possible solution even if uh, it it is just please come and try us again. We'll give you a free entree, for instance. Um, you know, for example, uh, the person that uh, was not happy with the service they received because it was slow that night, you know, you can acknowledge it and say, I really, you want to be empathetic. You want to put yourself in their uh, shoes or, you know, in their seat as they were sitting there and think about how you would feel in that time. Okay. And so you acknowledge that they had to wait, apologize, you know, say, this is not the type of service that we would like. Um, we are addressing this problem. And, uh, you know, here's a, uh, here's a uh, voucher to come and try our food again once more, come and try our restaurant once more. Um, we would like you to try and give us a try again. Okay. Um, and then just lastly, remember to only answer once online. Okay. Give them the option to contact you some other means online. Okay. If that person then continues to, you know, show negative um, responses or tries to say something after you've offered them a way to contact you, uh, it's really important not to engage, okay? It is important not to continue an argument online. It just looks bad for your business. Um, and when people look at your reviews going forward, um, people understand, you know, they understand that people get upset about service, 
But then if the uh, restaurant owner or whatever the case may be actually answers and says, hey, please contact us here. Um, we would like to help you with this problem. And then they see that the upset customer continued to write nasty stuff thereafter. They know that it's most probably they're dealing with a troll there and uh, uh, they'll trust that you tried the best you could um, in trying to sort out that problem. Um, and with this being said, in terms of all of this, I would highly recommend uh, Jay Barr's book, Hug Your Haters. Uh, it covers a lot of what I've just talked about and uh, in a lot more detail, and it can make a lot of difference to your business if you actually uh, follow through with what he says and what he tells you to do. So uh, let's look at, uh, we're gonna go on now and see how you actually go up, go about setting up uh, GMB. Um, I would definitely advise that you get the mobile app, okay, as it allows to update your listing on the fly. Okay, so wherever you are, if you're in, in your business itself, it actually has some more capabilities than the desktop app. Um, like you can get messages from. Posts, which is, you know, pretty powerful. Um, in real time. With that being said, I would say, you know, when, when you're initially setting up the business, use the desktop app to do that. Um, so I'm going to show you now how to register a business on GMB. Uh, for our purposes, we are creating Aster's dog apparel. Okay, that's him there in the photograph. Uh, he's one of my four dogs that I have. Uh, his brother's brown and they're, they're Labradors. Okay, so we're going to set up a business for him. Um, so what you do first is you go to Google, uh, my business website, um, what, it is literally business, the word business written at the end of, uh, google.com. So google.com forward slash business, um, go to that and click on that. Um, what you will see is if you've entered, uh, the business name, you want to be registered and you get this page what it means is that it was previously registered by someone else okay um, if you recognize that email address uh, you may know who that person was and you can ask them to give you access to the website uh, for instance you're a you're a manager of a restaurant and you see that that's the email of the business owner. You can then ask them to give you access to the GMB listing so that you can manage it. Um, if you don't recognize that email, uh, there is a process that you can go through to try and get uh, ownership back of the listing. And that's uh, over there, it shows you account recovery help guide. So you can go through that and try and uh, recover your account. Um, this is also very powerful because uh, it allows to make sure that there aren't any duplicate listings under your uh, under that same business name. So you can check that. All right. So as you can see, yeah, I put in Astor's dog apparel and it's not, it hasn't been claimed. Um, so you can create a business with this. And so you go ahead and uh, create the business name. Um, the next thing you're going to have to do is create a category for the business. Um, you need to select one that Google has in its system of options. Okay. Uh, it, it may be a little painful because it may not be exactly what you would consider your category. Um, but the category should describe what your business is, uh, not what it does or sells. Okay. Um, you can add more categories later. Uh, I'll show you how to do that, but, uh, just get the category that sort of best explains or describes uh, what your business is. Okay. Um, and then I have had questions about this before. Um, you can add a store or an office location here, but for instance, if it's a home office and you don't, you're not going to have people visiting or coming to your home office. So you don't really want that address, uh, on GMB, you can select no over there. Um, Google does want a fixed address though. 
they need that to confirm that it is a, a, a real business. Um, but if you select no there, that address will not be shown to anyone. So, you know, you can make the decision or over there. I've obviously entered my address. Um, and then you also have the option to fill out service areas. Uh, so, you know, you, you may actually service areas if you look at a business or whatever the case may be. Um, you may want to put service areas and that's really useful because, you know, Google search is local in nature. So if someone's in Finneytown, for instance, and they ask for a, a gutter company near me, if you have put Finneytown in as one of your service areas, you're going to appear on that search. So as you can see over there, I put in North College Hill, Finneytown, Mount Healthy. Um, it is useful, obviously, to fill that information out. Um, and then we're going to go on to, you know, you have a website. So if you do have a website, um, you, you can uh, obviously put that website in there, um, or you may just not have a website and you don't want one. But what you do get with GMB is you get a free Google My Business website and you don't have to use it, but Google sets it up automatically. It's automatically set up from the information that you have put into GMB. So you can use it as a temporary business, business website, for instance, if you're just starting out and you want something up and running, uh, or you can use it permanently. Um, it is, you know, it is useful to have that. Uh, and the great thing is that there's no hosting charges, so it's free. Um, and then you'll get to the end of that and you'll say, finish and manage your listing and you'll be able to do, you, you know, you'll be able to do some further information, further stuff with that. Uh, now that you have registered the website, um, you, we'll see the page come up, okay, with that initial information. Now, one thing I do want to mention, which is, you know, it's a little sad because like when we originally uh, wanted to set up this webinar, GMB had all its capabilities. Now with COVID, things have changed a little. Um, they have, uh, it has, um, like for instance, reviews, you can't actually create reviews at the moment and you can't answer reviews. Um, there are, and it takes a little longer to get stuff um, accepted and that type of thing. And the reason is, is that a, lot, a large amount of the Google staff are not at work at the moment. And uh, they're spending a lot of energy on making sure that healthcare uh, services and that are serviced and most recent information is available on that and that sort of thing. So uh, that is a little bit of a problem and it makes it a little difficult for me to obviously show you uh, how to do some of that stuff. Um, but uh, let, let's get on, go ahead anyway. Okay. Um, give me a second. Yeah. Sorry, that wasn't what I wanted to show you. So there we go. Um, so we've got Asta's page up and running over there. Um, you'll see I was talking about that advertising. You, you do have the option to uh, advertise there with that, but you don't have to do that. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to finish completing your listing. So you want to add your hours, okay, the hours of your business. You need to put your business hours in there. It's, a, it, it's really important. Um, you, can, you can set up a short profile name, okay. Uh, you can add a description for your business, which you really should, because that helps with search engine optimization, which I'm not going to go into today. Uh, that's a very difficult, it's not difficult, but it's, you know, it's more information than what we can cover today. Um, you can add a logo, obviously, and that type of thing. So what I'm going to click on here is posts on the left-hand side. And what you'll see on the left-hand side of, of that is that it says a, uh, COVID-19 update and Google has put that up obviously just for, for this period of time. And it's very important to fill that out, you know, and explain, is your business open? Um, uh, what services are you offering at this time? Um, 
how you're dealing with the situation. For instance, like with me, I'm a mission critical business, so I still go out and do photography of businesses. But I would say, you know, that I, I use PPE, 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 and um, uh, etc. You know how I actually deal with the COVID situation, and what Google has done is that it's uh, pinning that to the top of your page. Okay, it's pinning that post to the top of your page. Now, within posts, and it depends on the type of business you have. Again, um, but you can add offers. Uh, you can add products, um, you can add any updates, and you can also add an event, which is really useful. If you have an event coming up, you can put that information up. And as the event goes by, for instance, uh, that event will disappear off your page. The important thing to do, remember, is also that posts are really only sort of visible for the f uh, seven days, so you need to update posts. They're uh, providing information and Google likes to see that, that you're updating stuff. And we were talking about this a little earlier, but you got your info. So you got your service areas, your hours, uh, phone number, obviously good to put a phone number in. Um, and then your website, which over there is, that's that uh, temporary website. Um, you also have an, an appointment all. So for instance, if you make appointments, you can actually put one in it. And then those are the products and your accessibility, you know, sort of uh, what type of accessibility you have, whether you do gift wrapping, whether there's Wi-Fi, uh, wheelchair accessible, um, all those good things you have, you know, the types of uh, payments you you accept. Um, so that's, that's really useful to fill that information out as well. Um, and then on the right-hand side here, Unfortunately, you know, if you happen to have to close your business for whatever reason, which is terrible, um, you can mark it permanently closed or, and you can also remove the listing. And I would definitely advise that you do that. I don't know how many times I've wanted to go to a business and you arrive there and you find that it's been clo it's closed. You know, that, that's sort of frustrating for me. So I don't want to make that frustration for somebody else. Um, And that that was your business description at opening and photos so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to just pop over to my website so you uh, my gmb uh, page so you can get a, a better idea for the types of things uh, that you'll be looking at and there you can see that request reviews that i was talking about and uh, within um, this and it seems to move around but uh, you'll find it on your page there it says get more reviews so you can share your review form that's what i just did um and this is obviously the the front page it does give you a little bit of the information but if you go into posts for instance like what i was telling you about you can see the different posts that i've put up okay recently so it's really useful to have that information. Um, your info, you can see I've filled out all the info. My short, you know, my uh, shortening there is 3 60 Pro. Um, and then a really useful part of GMB is Insights. Uh, it shows you what your direct uh, traffic is, uh, what was uh, from Discovery, um, very useful. It shows you also queries that are used to find your business. So it's important to know what people are using to try and find your business. And you may, uh, this goes back to SEO, you may want to change things so that uh, you're more likely to be found. Um, if if people aren't find you, finding you, it may be that you're not putting the correct wording out there to be found. Um, and uh, over here, you can see when customers uh, visit or view your business, um, whether it's from search or whether it's from maps. So that's really useful again. Um, customer actions, okay. You can see how many people visit your website from the GMB listing, how many people request directions, how many people call you and how many people message you, okay. Um, and I was talking about visual media okay, and how important it is. 
this shows you how businesses like me, uh, like mine, for instance, or like yours, are uh, using photos or how many photos they're getting. So quite clearly, I need to be spending more time on putting photos up. Uh, but um, so that's the case. And then photo quantity. Uh, Google wants you to be putting up photos at least once weekly. Okay, so you need to think about that, uh, putting up the photos. And then let's go over to reviews. So within this actual app, you can see your reviews. Um, they're all going to populate over here. And you can see that I've answered them. Um, and so if you look at replied, and then it's easy to see the ones you haven't replied to. So this is good. I, I have no reviews that are awaiting a reply. So definitely make sure that you keep doing that. And then you have messaging and you won't see the messaging here. This is where I was telling you about the uh, mobile app. Um, that's where you would go to, to uh, be able to enable to get messages. Photos, I was talking about that, uh, the, the visual side of, of this, which is essential. Um, and you can see there's an overview. It has all the sort of ones. You can have ones by owner, by customer, by 360. So 360 is a 360 view of, of a business. And I'm going to show you a little bit more of that just now. Um, video. So if you have video of your business, again, really useful. Put up some short videos. Doesn't have to be the best. Uh, you know, you don't need to pay a lot of money for it. You can just use your own phone and make a video. It actually helps people get a feel for what the business is. Um, team members, take photos of your team members. It's, it's essential that you do that as well because people then can get a feel. It's about that trust thing, okay? Um, and then this is where you would actually fill out your products. So you can add, a, your, add your products. You can have uh, different categories and then add products to that. Um, and your services are, you know, sort of related to that, uh, what, what type of service, your primary category, and you, uh, you, you know, you, you can add um, other business categories, and then you can add services to those business categories. And I was telling you about that temporary website. As you can see, it was set up automatically by Google. Um, you can change some of the stuff, you know, themes, and you can edit it and add photos and so on. But um, like look over here, it says make an appointment, call now, get directions. So this this could act as your website, literally. Um, it, it shows you like my recent posts that I've made, uh, testimonials, gallery, uh, contact us. So it's a fully functional website, which is really useful for people. You know, you, you definitely can use it. Now, if you have more than one location, you can manage your locations over here and you'll see that I have my business and then Astor's Dog Apparel is now another business. So, um, and you can see there it's pending. Now, let me cover the part where, you know, you've registered your business, but now you need it to be verified and uh, you, you didn't see that as an option there. Most businesses, what you'll see once you've uh, registered the um, business is that it will ask you for a verification. And again, the majority of the time verification is done through a postcard. So that's why it's important to have an address, a physical address that you will receive that postcard from as well. So within about seven days, maybe a little longer right now, um, you will get a postcard from Google. It'll have five numbers or whatever the case may be. And you would then go in and enter that under your verification process. And obviously, if it's correct, your business will be verified. Um, now, with that being said, there are some businesses that you can do it almost automatically through a phone number. Um, and they can phone you or text you. Um, so that is an option, but it's not guaranteed that all businesses are going to be like that. Uh, you can also, if you have multiple locations, um, you, you, there is an option for bulk verification. And for, just for an example, with, uh, with this business, I actually, it was automatically, it, it didn't ask for anything. It's, uh, it, it's just 
automatically gone into um, the verification. So getting back to um, what you have here is you have your settings as well. And over here, uh, it automatically comes with all of that selected and I would leave it like that. So when people uh, say make a booking, you'll get an email saying someone made a booking. Okay. That is uh, uh, reminders, posts, all that, all that information. It is really uh, important that you just leave that selected so that you get that information. Uh, if someone uh, leaves a review, etc. cetera. Um, you also do have some support. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be honest, Google is uh, too big. There are just too many people. So support, there isn't a phone number that you can phone and it, it can be really difficult at times to try and get support. But within the service here, you can see there's a contact us and you can select that and uh, they should get hold of you eventually. It may take a little while, unfortunately. But again, like if you have any questions per se, you're welcome to reach out to me. Uh, I might know the answers already so I can help you with whatever problem you have. Uh, email me, call me, whatever the case you, you want to do. But so I was talking about a little earlier about 360 images and uh, uh, how that can be really important. And that builds into your trust of a business. Um, often what you'll find is that, you know, people may take photographs of a business, but it's only one view of that business. It's, you know, looking into the pretty side of the business, whatever the case may be. Um, that is useful, but for a person looking at a business to actually be able to see in all directions and to be able to move around within that business is extremely powerful. And you've seen this on Street View, okay, Google Street View, and a lot of people use that to find where they're going, for instance. But there's also the peg man that if you select that, you'll see those little blue dots on a business. That means you can actually go in and visit it. Um, but if you get a 3D virtual tour of your business, those 360 images will be amongst the photographs on the left hand side when you look at photographs. So you'd actually be able to click on that and go into a virtual tour. Um, so definitely think about that. Uh, with that being said, uh, to find a, a virtual, um, virtual tour photographer, Google has provided this option under Google Maps and Street View. Um, it is not a Google service. Basically, what Google is doing is they're putting up a list of Google recognized photographers. I'm one of those, you know, I'm, I'm being recognized by Google as I, I do a good job, basically. Um, but what you find is that you can actually put in your city or you can put in your, your state and it will give you a list of all the uh, photographers that are in that area. And you can click on it and contact those people and ask them. And, and they're gonna quote you a price, okay? It's, and as I say, it's got nothing to do with Google, um, but they will then create a virtual tour for you and upload it to um, Google uh, Maps and people will be able to experience that. So what I'm going to show you is uh, Marty's Hops and Vines. It's a little uh, wine bar um, close to where I live. And just to give you a feel for what a virtual tour looks like, um, let's go through it. Okay. And this is a web-based version. So different, different uh, you, you can put this on a website, for instance. Different providers provide different services. I provide this and... Uh, this, what you can see here, so you can move around inside. Um, this is, if you go onto Google Maps, you'll see this exact image, but, or this exact virtual tour, but uh, you're also able to see this if you, you could embed this in your web page, for, for example. So there we go. So really powerful. I mean, look at that. You can see everything. Someone who looks at this on Google is going to go, okay. I like this place. I want to come and visit it. So um, 
or maybe they'll go, well, this is not what I want to go. You know, if you're looking for a sports bar and this is not a sports bar, well, you know, you'll win the next time. Someone will be looking for a cool place to come and visit. So it gives people an idea about what your business is and they're going to trust it, which is really important for you. Um, so let's go back to this, which I was showing you uh, a little earlier. You also have the ability, Google has its own, is a listing in itself, but you also have to remember that there are other listing services and review management services out there. And if you want to be successful, you should also um, look at those sites. Um, and then maybe Yelp, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Now, some of those don't have reviews, like Instagram doesn't have a review option. But what it does have, if you have an Instagram social site for your business, is that you have your contact information there. So the important thing to remember with social media and these listing and review sites is that you have the same information across all of them. Okay. So same phone number, same hours, very important. You don't want to confuse people because they go to Facebook and you know, then they go and look at Google and this is not the same. What's correct? You know, people want to get that correct information straight away. And then also uh, reviews, uh, very important that you answer reviews in every type of media that, that's out there. Um, it can be a little tedious, I know, but that's the window onto your business. Okay. And that's what makes a big difference in getting a customer um, satisfaction and, and getting support from your customers is actually answering those reviews. There is software out there that makes it a little easier, you know, that you can monitor everything um, and then answer in line, you know, like you get a review on, on uh, Facebook, you can answer immediately. Or if you get an answer, if you get a review on Google, you can answer it immediately. But obviously there's a price in, involved with that. And, uh, you can do all of that for free uh, by going directly into Facebook or whatever the case may be. Um, okay. And then uh, do we have any questions? Um, I, I'd like to be able to, you know, I'd like to answer any questions that you may have at this time. Are there any questions by chance? And if you have any questions that, you know, you, you want people to, that you would like me to answer at a later stage, um, go ahead and uh, reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help you. And as I said, all questions that I've had uh, over these last three days, um, I will be answering them all and putting them on my website. And I'll send you a link to uh, see those questions and answers, plus the actual uh, video. And then uh, just going to put up a last poll over here. If you can answer that, I appreciate it. And be honest here, yeah, don't just give me a five. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I don't know if I can believe it. But anyway, all right. Um, I really appreciate you, uh, uh, you know, coming in and listening to this. Uh, it's been great. Um, and as I said, if you have any questions going forward, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us and uh, we'd be happy to help you out and be safe out there. And um, it, was, it was a pleasure talking to you. Have a good day.